When the moon is new and darkness reigns, ghosts and demons come out to play. When the night grows cold and the world gone mad, two men stand boldly on the dreary land. A day when monsters no longer hide, the kind of day in which we thrive. Welcome, welcome to Paratruth Live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Paratruth Radio. I, of course, am Justin. And I'm Eric. And tonight, uh, since it's our comeback episode, we thought, you know what, why not do a live episode? So here we are live. Uh, We are now in Season 8, Episode 220. Um, So how does it feel to be coming back there, Eric? Oh, well, you mentioned episode 220. I had no idea that's how far along we were, and it's crazy <laughs> to me. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, hours put into the show. Um, yeah. You know, it, it feels good to be back, and I've talked about it over the last couple of months in particular as to when exactly we were going to be coming back. Uh, and it's somewhere between September and November, I think, originally planned. So I think October is a good month to do it, considering what October really stands for for us. Mm-hmm. Uh being that Halloween is just a few weeks away. What better time for Paratruth to come back? Right, exactly. Well, you know, a few uh, things that we're going to be having going on. Um, we're actually going to be going through a little bit of a format change. Um, we're going to be going through a uh, little bit of a transition now. Um, if you guys is, haven't seen it on Spreaker yet, uh, we decided to combine... Um, a bunch of shows under a new media name uh, called New Lantern Media. Uh, and we had decided to do this uh, for, I mean, a couple of reasons. One of and foremost is, you know, we've got multiple shows. Why not put them under one banner? Um, and in turn, it'll save us time and money and all that good stuff to have them all in one place. So I thought, you know what? Let's just do that, and then uh, you can find our shows all under one spot. So when you're on Spreaker, um, just look under New Lantern Media, and you'll find all. Uh, you'll find Beyond Reason. You'll find Crime Crack. You'll find Paratruth Radio, and uh, I decided to release our three episodes of the S Files that we had. Uh, so definitely check those out as well. So, um, was there any, um, any housekeeping that you can think of that we need to get done? Uh, well, yeah. One thing I, I think we should probably mention right a, early on is not only is the format cha- changing, as Justin said, but we're going to be releasing them differently as well. So we're not going to be doing weekly episodes anymore. We're going to be switching to bi-weekly episodes. Uh, and so, for example, this week with our live episode, it is October 6th. You're getting that here. And I think we're releasing an episode next week for the 13th. And then yep. every other week after that, you'll get a new episode. So the next one after that would be the 27th for our special Halloween episode. Uh, and you're pretty much looking at two episodes a month other than holiday special episodes. In those cases, December, for example, being the next one, uh, we'll have three episodes that month. So we decided, I think it was the best choice for us just based on work and time consumption. Uh, You know, sometimes when you're doing episodes on a weekly basis and you're working and you're doing other things with family, friends, stuff like that, you know, you you don't want to be cooped up in your basement or your studio working uh, all the time. Uh, so we decided the best thing for ourselves, but also for all of you, is to spread things out because now we're able to put more time and energy into each and every production, bring you higher quality content on a little more regular basis. So hopefully it works out for everybody. Um, but yeah, new stuff. Well, I think doing what what we're going to be doing um the new format is we're going to actually start doing uh strange paranormal weird uh ufo news headlines and i think that uh 
doing that type of stuff or that type of uh, area, um, it's going to be kind of hard sometimes to find new content. So, I mean, there are weird, weird um, stuff happening every day, but uh, I think that with doing this format, it'll help keep stuff fresh for you guys as well. Uh, as far as the the content is concerned, because we may come across a couple of headlines and then not find any for a couple of weeks. So I think that is a better idea anyways. Um, I mean, who knows? We might start doing it weekly again, but as of right now, I think this is the best idea for us just because of what Eric was talking about with, with schedules and stuff. So, um, so one thing that I really wanted to start the show out with is uh, Eric had brought this up to me. It was like a couple of days ago uh, that there's this there was this odd sound going on in uh, the area that my brother lives in Cleveland. Uh, so I wanted you to explain a little bit before I play the sound. Yeah. So you know, there's there's always these uh, lately, especially there's been a lot of. Uh occurrences in which people are posting stuff about weird sounds happening uh things that sound like horns or trumpets uh, coming from the sky or from like all around from the earth or something like that and something like that has happened twice now to me both in the area that my cousin justin's brother lives uh the first time it was really just weird to me like i've never heard a sound like it it went on for a good 30 minutes it was loud like annoyingly loud um and then it just vanished and i was like well maybe it's just you know train track something like that but then this past week roughly a month and a half later i heard the sound again and this time not only did i hear it uh obviously my cousin matt he saw it or heard it too uh but everyone inside the house heard it and they came outside to ask us like do you hear that sound it's like well of course we hear the sound we're outside <laughs> But it's just, it was so weird. It's this really loud, uh, like I said, it sounds like a car horn or almost like a trumpet, a continuous blast. Uh, it might be quiet, you know, you hear birds and stuff, and then all of a sudden the sound immediately starts radiating, and it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. First it sounded like it was the highway, then it sounded like maybe the train tracks, uh, and then it sounded like maybe it's coming from a, the opposite side uh, towards, like, the west. Um and just couldn't really tell where it's coming. And obviously when the wind blows, it gets louder depending on which direction it's wind is blowing. And uh, it just, as soon as it starts, it's loud. It's not like it doesn't, it doesn't like creep up. Like, you know, when you turn something on, it might warm up and get louder and louder and louder as it goes. Mm -hmm. No, it just starts off really loud right away. And then it went for a good 30 minutes continuously, no real fluctuation in the sound whatsoever. And then over a 10-minute period, after those 30 minutes, we're talking about 40 minutes total, uh, that last 10-minute period, it slowly wound down and just kind of vanished. And that was the end of the sound. And, you know, normally I would think, okay, this is something explainable. Uh, but then my cousin's wife is telling us that there's people on Facebook posting about it. People who mm -hmm. live in that same city asking, what is the sound, you know, so on and so forth. And I'm thinking... You know, I grew up in that town. These people who are posting about it probably grew up or lived there for a while. They would probably know what that sound is if they've heard it before. Especially mm -hmm. if I've heard it twice now and I don't even live there. Um, so if there's people wondering what this sound is, it's obviously something that isn't normal. Something that can't easily be explained as to whatever, you know. And I, I guess there's assumptions out there as to what it could be. It could be the train tracks. could be uh, like like a factory that's building something or highway people are building something, turning something on. But again, it's just random. It doesn't happen on a regular basis. It, for me, it was the first time I heard it uh, over a two month period. It was the first time that my cousin's wife had heard it at all. And she was there the same day I heard it the first time. Uh, so mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just really weird. But, you know, I ended up recording about a minute of it. I considered doing the entire thing. And I was like, well, I don't feel like sitting here for 30 minutes or however long this thing's going to be blasting and <laughs> recording it. So I recorded a good 60 seconds of it and I sent it off to Justin because who else am I going to send it to other than other family members, which I did as well. But I was like, this is my this is my co-host. This is my uh, partner in crime here on Paratruth. I need to get his opinion. So 
unfortunately, I don't think the sound does it quite justice. It was so much louder in person. But we did go ahead and extract the audio from the video that I sent him. And we're going to go ahead and play that for you guys right now. And maybe you can give us your opinion. Now, uh, just so you guys know, it's not the full minute. I cut it down into okay. 15 seconds just because it's it's the same sound uh, continuously. So um, check it out and let us know what you guys think. All right, so to me, when I first was listening to it and I was sharing this with Eric, to me, it almost sounds like a leaf blower um, in the background. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know how best to describe it. Um, Right. Well, and you're not the only one who said that either when listening to that particular audio clip. It does sound a lot like a leaf blower. And that's the problem that we have with catching audio on a phone in particular. Right. Uh, right. Is you get a lot of white noise in the background and it's blending and it's mixing and it's just it's a, it's a mess. Um, but if you were there in person, you would know 100 percent that it was not a leaf blower. A leaf blower has a very distinct sound. And it does sound like that in this audio clip. But in person, if you're actually in the town when it's happening, it's just it sounds like it's coming from everywhere at once. It's horribly loud. Uh, It's something you can't ignore, you know, and uh, this wasn't something that was like right in our front yard. This was way beyond. I don't even know where we couldn't see it. There was no real distinct, uh, clear direction as to where it was coming from. It's just a constant radiation all around us. So. Well, uh, Brian Anderson, he's in chat, and he said, sounds like a horn, but it could be train tracks like a, a tuning fork. Mm-hmm. Right, and it could be. It very well could be. Um, again, though, it's just interesting to me because, you know, this is one of those things where you would think, being that the train tracks are no less, probably less than a mile from that house uh, that I grew up in, which is where Matt is now. Uh, You'd think we'd be hearing this on a more regular basis. I grew up there, spent 18 years in that house, never once heard anything like it up until the last few months. Um, And neighbors, people around us, had never heard anything like it either. And they lived there for years now. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it could be a number of things. I know next time, which is probably something I should have done, but I was working on stuff. Trying, we were trying to get things done before the nightfall. Uh, but next time, if that sound happens, I'll be hopping into the car and trying to follow the sound as best I could to see if I can't locate its source. Well, there's not really any train tracks that are used by that house, is there? Yes, there are. It's uh, oh, in Maple Heights, right over the bridge. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, well... This is, again, from Brian. He said, so question is, have they been doing any maintenance on any train tracks because they grind the rust off with a machine? Right. And as far as we know, uh, as of right now, without actually asking the city uh, of Maple Heights, because it isn't Garfield Heights, it's another city, um, there isn't anything happening with the train tracks. The closest thing that we know would be maybe some work on the highway, which they've been doing work on the highway for a little over a year now. Um, but even then the section of highway that they're working on is in the opposite direction of where the sound seemed to be coming from. Now that's not to indicate that the sound was indeed coming from the East as opposed to the West. Uh, but I don't really know. You know, it's, it's hard to tell. Like I said, when the wind would blow, the sound would seem as though it was coming from the same direction that the wind was blowing. Uh, and once it stopped, it would change directions. So it, it, it was just everywhere. I don't know. Well, and as you said earlier, nobody had ever heard this sound before, or right. n- not not commonly anyways. So you would think if it's highway construction, people would have been hearing it since highway construction has been going on for quite a while. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing with train track uh, maintenance, though. If people had been living there for as long as they had... Uh, 
you would think that they would have heard that sound before. Right. Because I'm yeah, assuming people know. that were coming out have lived in the area for a while, correct? Right. Of course. And I mean, your brother's been there for years now, you know? Um, so I don't, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, this is one of those things right now. It's unexplainable. Uh, obviously there are some, uh, options of what it could be. I think, uh, it's just going to take some, some, some digging next time that sound comes around. I'm going to have to try to see if I can't find the source or see if I can't ask around the city and find out what's happening. I, I looked it up online. I spent some time online trying to figure it out. My sister did as well. We couldn't find anything. There's no posts about it on, uh, you know, the Garfield city, uh, web page is nothing for the Mabel Heights wonders. You know, it's, I don't know. We just don't know. So I guess we'll see. Time will tell, hopefully. Well, Brian said, uh, sound is a pain to get a direction from bouncing off buildings and hills and such too. So right. even if you would Absolutely. have been able to, to track it, you might not have even found the source even then. So, right. You never know. But, um, so yeah, um, and it, that, the other thing too, and this is something that you had mentioned at the beginning before we played the sound, is sounds like this mm-hmm. have been recorded throughout, not even just the U.S., the world. I mean, I've seen them right. from, yeah, like, uh, uh, where was the most recent one? I think it was Norway. Or no, no, no. The guy was sounded like he was Irish. He didn't post where he was, but he sounded like he was Irish. And this sound was... It's sound... Since you were recording with your phone, it probably distorted it, but it sounded the same as as everybody else has been recording. Right. On their phones. It, I, so. mean, I think it would have sounded a little different on a regular camera with a slightly better microphone than what my iPhone has. And I, you know, the, my iPhone's pretty new. I mean, it's a iPhone 10, so it's not super old, has probably some of the best technology in regards to audio and video, but it's right. still like you get this, just that weird, like, it picks up everything. You know, there's no directional sound on, on it. Uh, it's, like you can even hear the wind blowing. You can hear like my cousin was cutting stuff. You can hear that as he's like cutting through some wood and whatnot. And it's just, it's dirty sound, but Hey, uh, Brian Bowden from inside the goblin universe uh, said, are you talking about Gabriel's horn? I heard that in person in New York city. Right. Again, that, that's exactly be. what we're talking about. Um, and that's, that's the sounds that we've heard, you know, through various different videos that they've been posting online lately. If seen it on mm-hmm. TV, obviously right. a lot of paranormal shows have been posting about it or uh, showing it. Uh, and that's exactly what this kind of sounded like much of like that stuff, uh, in person. And it's not like it's a scary thing or anything. It's just an eerie sound. And I, I'm pretty sure there's a reasonable explanation for it. I know there are meteorologists who've given reasonable explanations in regards to how the earth moans in the sky and all, you know, how everything interconnects and creates these weird sound waves. Um, But even still, you have to question just what exactly that sound is and where exactly is it coming from? Like, what's the proof that the sound is indeed a, you know, something that's simply, uh, I guess, ecological, something that's. You know, right. found by the Earth itself, or created by the Earth itself. Right. Well, there's been speculation to that. Uh, there have been. I don't know if they are Christian researchers, but some are saying from the fall of Lucifer, and it's a a residual sound from him f- falling. I mean, there's all kinds of different. <laughs> beliefs and explanations as to what the sound could be and i think some of them are going to be used to 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 kind of draw fear out of people you know especially not to say that all christians do it but there are christians who are out there who are going to use that explanation to try and draw fear out of people to try to lead them to christ uh and i think there's other christians who are a little more reasonable uh as part of the times i mean i'm not saying that it's not something that's establishing the end times by any means I don't think our world is anywhere near that point yet. But at the same time, 
don't let your guard down. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. The Bible's very clear about that. Be be wary and be cautious of everything. Be ready for that day. Uh, so nothing necessarily to worry about, but something to think about, you know? Um, Jerry had posted that uh, it sounds like a new government special ops jet. Hmm. Um, and I I've mean, that could be one, too. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Heidi was asking if we could play the sound again. So I'll play the sound again yeah. for you guys. Uh, tell us what, what you think in the comments. Um, and uh, if we have time, um, maybe somewhere towards the end of the show, I'll open up the lines if you have Skype to call us. But stay tuned for that. We're not going to say for sure that we're going to do that just yet. Uh, but uh, here's the sound again for you guys. All right, so there it is again for you guys. Let us know what you guys think because it's definitely it's interesting. Um, because, like we said before, uh, it, it's something that's been going around and it's been circulating. And <laughs> Brian says it's it sounds a bit like that monster from Lost met Godzilla. Uh, Gabriel's horn is the sound of the end times. We're all gonna die. I I don't think we're that at that point yet. <laughs> but <laughs> um uh Brian Anderson said around 2014-15ish there was a rash of strange sounds going around from all over the world. Uh but yeah, I mean it goes back for to quite a while. I mean, we started Paratruth back up in uh what was it? I think it was 20, 2016, I think, is when we started it. So they had been kind of circulating around before we even started Paratruth Radio. But Kat says, it's the dinner bell and we're the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it, interesting, interesting sound. Uh can we really explain it? Not really. Um, there's a lot of people that have speculated with the sounds that are going around viral on Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff with these sounds. But definitively, I mean, like I said, to me, with the recording, it, it sounds like uh, it sounds like a leaf blower. But Obviously, people would have known what a leaf blower sounds like if it was a leaf blower. And you guys, you, right. you're saying that it sounded different in person compared to the recording. So, right. I mean, it, it was like I said, um, for for your brother's wife to come outside asking if anyone can else can hear it. Like, it, I mean, it was that loud. She was inside this watching the TV with three kids. You know, it's you know how loud that house can get. Yeah. Um, and it was radiating through the windows. And, and those windows are pretty good. Those are pretty brand new windows uh, that, that were put in relatively recently. So right. I don't know. It's just it's interesting. You know, it does sound like a leaf blower in the video, but I assure you, it's much louder than that in person. <laughs> and didn't sound like a leaf blower at all in, in person. And it didn't right? sound like a leaf blower at all. No. Um. Brian, if you go on the live show, uh, you sh sh there should be a chat right there for you. Um, you just got to click on the show, and usually it's where the comments are on Spreaker. So if you want to get into the chat, that's where, where it's at there. Um, all right. Well, we are actually coming about to the halfway point of the show. I mean, unless we go a little bit longer, um, we're not sure on that yet, but I'm going to play a quick break for you guys and we will be right back with Paratruth Radio. There are spirits everywhere watching, waiting, seeking that opportunity. 
to reveal themselves like no other. They fill our worlds with so much. Seriously? You didn't just do that. You farted on the promo? What's wrong with you? I thought you were professional. C go away. Go I, I got it. I got it. Hey everybody, it's Brian Bowden, host of Nobo Boomy, where we explore deep inside the Goblin universe. We have an amazing show that covers the paranormal, conspiracies, music, art, entertainment, trending topics, and so much more. Please join us by subscribing to the show on Podbean at InsideTheGoblinUniverse.Podbean.com, on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and everywhere you find podcasts. It's an informative, fun, and overall entertaining good time, and uh, we'll keep the gas to ourselves. Why don't you burp next time? Someone give me Brian Anderson. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we were talking about the sound that Eric heard uh, in the, the area where my brother lives. And actually, this is the same house where you guys had some of your haunting experiences as well. Right. Yeah, I grew up in uh, the house was haunted when I was growing up and Actually, 2000, I want to say it was like around, it's probably right around two, th two th I don't really know what year, you know what? I'm stuttering because I don't know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> there's a uh, moment in which, like, you know, you, you're growing up, your parents are always telling you the place isn't haunted. There's nothing to worry about. Ghosts aren't real, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there was this one New Year's Eve. I was working uh, for a catering company at the time, and everybody stayed at the house late because i didn't get off until after midnight uh, and i came home and of course we're you know me and my sisters cousins and everybody were talking about hauntings and in particular that house and how haunted it was and is um when we were there and my mom and my uncle justin's dad actually started laughing and talking about how the house was haunted when they were growing up because they grew up in that same house. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, everything kind of clicked. And I realized that these things that my own mom has been telling me aren't real. She herself experienced her entire childhood growing up there, which only helps solidify all the things that we were seeing and hearing. And these are things like uh, hearing somebody walking up and down our basement stairs or even up and down the stairs from our first floor to the second floor. My sister's room and my room were on the second floor um, or the, you know, the upper floor. And uh, there'd be things, walk something walking up and down the stairs. We would see shadows, uh, lights would flicker. Um, there'd be knocks on the doors, handles would jiggle. Uh, my sister one night woke up and saw me sitting over myself like a spiritual form of myself. Uh, she said she could see through me and I was just sitting there and I looked up at her and cause she had literally called my name. She thought I was just awake and she walked in and I was sleeping. So, you know, it was just these really weird things is really haunting. Um, and then we moved from that house and your brother moved in and they mm -hmm. haven't experienced anything in that house at all. But of course we experience hauntings here at the new house in my parents' house. Uh, and that went on for several years before that kind of ended for most people, <laughs> most of the family. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, it is really interesting that there's so many paranormal incidents that have or happened around that particular house in Garfield. Right. So I thought we could move on into our new format that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be, like I said at the beginning, if you hadn't uh, heard the beginning of the show, we're going to be switching to a more of a uh, weird or strange paranormal news cast, sort of. Um, so, Eric, I was going to actually have you start out with one of the ones that you found. Okay, no problem. I think I can do that. So, actually, both of mine this week, starting off, is uh, both entertainment-based. And the first one is actually regarding, I don't know if anyone else watches these. I usually don't because I don't like staying up all night if I can help it. I don't sleep well to begin with. So if I can stay away from staying up all night, you know, I'm going to. <laughs> but every October, there happens to be a live 
paranormal investigation event on either Travel Channel or Discovery Channel. And this year, it happens to be on Discovery's Travel Channel. It usually is. Uh, And it's going to be this Friday at 8 p.m. And it's in in particular, it's Haunted Salem Live. And Justin, you and I have talked about Salem a lot. We wanted Mm -hmm. to go there. I was supposed to be going there this month. That changed due to some unforeseen circumstances at the time. So because I want to be the one that that goes with you. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly what it is. (laughs) Um, But anyway, so this Friday at 8 p.m., if you're interested in this kind of thing, Haunted Salem Live. My computer's acting funny. Give me a second. Okay. Haunted Salem Live is going to be featuring Amy Bruni and Adam Berry of Kindred Spirits, Katrina Weedman and Jack Osborne of Portals to Hell. Uh, I think it's Dalen Spratt, Juwan Mass, and Marcus Harvey of Ghost Brothers. If you guys haven't watched that, it just started on Travel Channel only a few weeks ago. Uh, as well as Dave Schrader and Cindy Kaza uh, of The Holzer Files. All of them are going to be joined by self-proclaimed medium and psychic Chip Coffee, And they're going to be investigating the Proctor House, which is the home of John and Elizabeth Proctor, who were convicted during the Salem witch trials. Now, for those of you who haven't listened yet, you should, to our very highly regarded and most downloaded episode of all time, Salem, the birth of American communism, you would know that John Proctor was the first man to be found guilty of witchcraft and executed, and part of the Proctor story inspired the most famous story, The Crucible. Now, the new owners of the house, they just bought the Proctor house last year, claim to be experiencing weird paranormal things happening on the premises and around the home. Uh, It's got them kind of freaked out, and they are finally, for the first time, letting investigators in, uh, and it's going to be live. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, want to see what's happening, if anything, make sure you jump in on Friday to Travel Channel, 8 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, if you can stay up all night, good luck. I'm not going to be. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with staying up all night? Oh, man, I get so depressed and, like, angry if I'm up on, like, man, if I don't get my sleep, I get in really bad moods. It's not good for <laughs> you anybody. You don't get your beauty sleep, so. you're, you're cranky? No, man, and, you know, and not that I need a lot of beauty sleep, because, I mean, look at me, but... You know, it it helps. <laughs> All right. Well, this the one that I'm going to do right now is actually come goes from a di- different direction here. Uh, it's actually kind of a cryptid type one. Um, and thank you to Debbie from Paranormal Forum. She's actually provided me with a couple of these. So these are the ones I'm using for this week. Uh, this one's from phantomsandmonsters.com. Owlman twice encountered in Armstrong County, Pennsylvania. Uh, On October 11th, 2013, at approximately 5.30 p.m., a gentleman was in his recording studio, a separate building on the property. A client was playing the piano at the time. Uh, DF is what they they call him in this article, because I'm assuming he didn't want to give his real name. Walked to the adjoining kitchen to get a glass of water. When he looked at out the window, he noticed a large winged being descending from the sky. He described it as an owl man with wide feathered wings that had a longer feather spaced six to seven inches along the bottom edge of the wings. The head was round with large black circular eyes, small owl-like ears, and a short hooked beak. The body was five foot in height and shaped like that of a human with legs ending in three-toed talon feet. The feathered body was light to dark tan. The wingspan was 18 to 20 feet. It was a huge and impressive sight. The wing being seemed to be drawn to the piano music in DF's opinion. It landed briefly near the back of the studio, then flapped its wings three times and quickly ascended into the sky. He mentioned the sighting to his wife and children who said that he should report the encounter. A few days later, DF was once again in the recording studio. There was another client paying, playing a piano and As DF briefly stepped outside, he noticed the same winged being descending near the studio. This time it must have seen DF, then it quickly flew away. DF is a bit 
old school and didn't have a cell phone with him at the time, but he did sketch the winged being after each occasion. After six years, he was finally convinced to come forward with his sightings. Any further information will be added to this report. And I mean, these pictures that he sketched out, though they're kind of crude in the sense that he he must not have been much of a drawer. I mean, it kind of shows how big this thing must have appeared to him. Now, we've talked about All Man a little bit on this show. Uh, we've, I've actually heard episodes of uh, different shows, different paranormal shows where people are reporting seeing owls and then later on finding out they were abductee cases where it was almost like a false memory or false uh, impression to make them think they saw an owl, but instead they saw, or yeah, instead of seeing the alien creature. So um, what are your thoughts on that, Eric? Um... Yeah, I mean, you know, what's interesting about the winged creatures is there's a lot of stories that about winged creatures going way back. Uh, and we've talked about several of them on air. Um, anything from, like, the Jersey Devil to the Thunderbirds. Uh, I mean, you name it. We've covered just about everything we could. And it is seeing these winged creatures... I mean, even I, I think there's, there's been times where I've texted you and said, I think I saw something in the sky. I mean, I've always said it's UFO because you know, obviously unexplainable. Um, but you see these weird winged creatures. They look like birds, but they kind of have this pterodactyl looking, you know, outline to them. Uh, and there's other times that they're kind of humanoid. Uh, and, and it's, it's weird. Like, I don't know, man, like this, this particular show that you're telling me, it reminds me of that picture that you sent me. What was it? Like, I think it's like a year and a half ago now, maybe longer, uh, of what looked like a giant, angel looking creature or i think it was mentioned as being like the devil on the side of the road uh you sent me a picture to try to debunk oh do you remember that photo by chance vaguely yeah vaguely is like is basically just a shadow of a mass and it looked like a human really tall human probably around 15 to 20 feet tall with giant wings uh that extended from either side of him and we see more and more of things like this on a regular basis, these types of pictures or hear these kinds of stories. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, th- I think there's some questions that have to be asked. You know, did you say that this person took a picture? He just has drawings, right? He has drawings. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I'm not to, to say that this person didn't see whatever they saw, um, but there are some things you need to consider for the time. Like, were they drinking? Are they on any particular drugs? You know, the type of things that you and I would normally ask uh, our clients when we were doing paranormal investigations. You know, these these very important questions that help you determine whether or not something could be legitimate or if something can be falsified because of one person's mind, uh, depending on where their mind is at the time, you know. Uh, And personally, part of me kind of hopes that there's something that we can see. Like, maybe there is a winged creature out there. I think we're all interested in that elusive cryptid type creature to finally show up. Um, but I don't know, you know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, unless we capture something like we've said, even with the Bigfoot, nobody's really going to believe anything anyways. Um, as far as what these things are or, or, uh, if there is even an actual creature out there. And I I mm-hmm. want to say Owlman is kind of linked to Mothman too, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it would be interesting to, to see if Owlman is ever linked to any UFO sightings or anything like that. Kind of like we've talked about with Bigfoot where it's um, sometimes a a connection with UFO sightings, paranormal activity, Bigfoot sightings, that's worth a thing. So, Mm -hmm. 
But, all right, let's go on to your next headline. Okay, so I don't know if any of you happen to watch The Haunting of Hill House. I know in chat I'm saying some people don't have TV, which is crazy to me. I don't know. I, I'm going to be able to live with myself. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Justin, did you, did you get a chance to watch The Haunting of Hill House last year? I No, I didn't. Oh, shame on you, man. Shame on you. <laughs> It, it, it's really it's really good. You have Netflix, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, because you, like, you watch Supernatural and stuff. So, yep. I mean, you should watch it since it's, you know, out and free-ish. I mean, you're paying <laughs> monthly for Netflix, but you know right. what I mean. Anyway, so The Haunting of Hill House came out last year, and it was by far one of the greatest shows that Netflix had ever produced and released on Netflix. Um, and it was not so much a horrifying, like, jump scare type show, which is great for me. I don't like those so much. I like the eerie thrillers that kind of sneak up on you, the ones that are so haunting that you actually dream about them at night. Uh, and that's exactly what this was. And it was so well told. It was the, one of the highest rating shows for Netflix in many, many years. And, of course, as of recently, we heard that there's going to be a second season of The Haunting of Hill House. And it has just come out that there are, instead of being one director for everything as there was last year, there's going to be multiple directors for each episode. Which, if you watch any television show, there's always going to be a different director for each episode. Which is kind of cool because it brings different story arcs or different takes on the story from the director's perspective, which is really interesting. But what's interesting about this particular article that I came across is that The Haunting of Hill House, even though the second season is an official second season, it's actually going to be called The Haunting of Bly Manor, and it's not going to have any reference whatsoever to The Haunting of Hill House. It's actually a completely new story with a completely new story arc that has the same characters from the first season with an addition of several new characters. Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to make that work. I always hate when they do that kind of stuff. Um, because, you know, when, when you watch a show that has the same, you know, certain people playing certain characters, that show ends and then you do a whole new show with those same characters, same names and everything. It's like, well, did the last, you know, Haunting a Hill House even happen? Like, what, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> but apparently this new season, which takes place at Bly Manor, which is the setting for the Henry James psychological gothic horror novella, The Turn of the Screw, uh, takes place almost entirely at the Old Country Manor. And the story is going to be based around two young orphans who are looked after by a young governess and by whom most of the story is narrated by. Now, they're not going into great detail as to what exactly is going to be happening, but I'm sure that there's going to be some type of weird haunting spectacle between these two young orphans i think this in my opinion i think the haunt is going to be surrounding these two kids uh but i'm excited for it i mean it's not going to come out until next year so we're looking at 2020 october 2024 um but if you guys liked haunting in hill house or if you haven't seen it yet you should watch it because you'll probably be tuning in next year for it yeah um well i um I guess I'll have to get caught up. I I think the reason I didn't watch it, we tried watching it, and it seemed like the the first episode or two were kind of slow moving. So it maybe we just slow, didn't give it, it enough it chance. It is slow moving in the beginning. It is slow moving in the beginning, um, and it picks up. And you know, it's that's one of my probably the only thing I didn't really like about it was there are episodes that seemed a little too slow, but it all comes together so well in the end and you realize that you can't really have that show without it being slow in the beginning because that's just how life is. Everything happens slowly, you know, and (laughs) builds the suspense. And that's what they're doing. Unlike a movie where you have to build suspense in a very short amount of time that's within an hour, a show like this, you're building suspense over 10 hours. You know, it's not like each episode is an individual story of itself. It's one continuous story for 10 hours straight, which is why you have a slow build up. Um, they're talking about different shows on in the chat, and Brian Anderson said American Horror Story. The past couple seasons have blown, and 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. So I hope that the new season, uh, I haven't got to watch it yet. I decided to record it and just uh, binge watch it. So I hope they redeem themselves with the new season. Well, I mean, well, that's going to be hard to do. I mean, it's like The Walking Dead. You know, they're not going to be redeeming themselves anytime soon. They they were done years ago. <laughs> but um, but yeah, they that's what's happening, keep coming you know? back it's, just like Supernatural. <laughs> they they keep going back, and Supernatural is another one where you know you, I've told you, I'm like sometimes I just wish they would have ended it. I still wish yeah. they would have ended it at season five the way they're supposed to do it because it was perfect. Now I'm really sad it's ending. That I know I'm going to cry regardless I, mean, I was it's funny because i was talking i forget who i was talking to but uh oh, i was talking to a friend of mine and i was telling her it's really weird because i'm 33 years old the show supernatural has been on for 15 years which means i've literally spent almost half of my entire life watching supernatural so it's as if half of my life is just ending yeah in may like, I, and i know it's coming like my life it, half of my life is ending in may <laughs> i'm gonna be so sad but um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Castle Rock is another show that's very similar, actually, to uh, The Haunting of Hill House. And that's another one that was very slow build up. But again, if you haven't seen that one either, that was on Hulu, I think. Um, oh, OK. But that was that was really good. And they actually have a second season of Castle Rock coming out. But again, it's going to be a lot like uh, The Haunting of Bry. But I said I said Bry Manor, I think, uh, I think in yeah. which Castle Rock isn't going to be visiting the same characters or the same story as they did in the first season. They're going to have a whole new cast with a whole new story for the second season, which, again, disappointing. But, you know, I guess I we'll see. mean, did the first one end where you would think it wasn't going to come back for a second season or, you know, what as, as it is with like any of Stephen King stories, there's always that possibility that some the story can continue you know um but i feel like at the end of castle rock there are certain moments that like we don't get told the entire story uh you you learn the truth but then you want to know more about that truth like what else does this particular i'm not going to say anything since i don't i don't spoil it for you justin but right uh, or anyone else who hasn't watched it um but you learn certain things at the end of the story and you're like now i want to know more about that person's story like the full story, not just the manipulation that we've been, you know, given. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know a lot of things. So, yeah, I don't think anybody does. They can claim that they're some type of expert, but I don't believe it. All right. So last one that I've got for you guys, uh, this is one from coast to coast AM. Again, this is something that uh, Debbie shared with me. So, uh, Russia doctor suggests Yeti could have killed the uh, diet uh, diet love pass hikers. Uh, one of the more fantastic theories of what may have caused the infamous diet diet Jesus, this name is weird diet love pass incident is getting another look thanks to a Russian doctor who says that a Yeti could have caused the tragic event. Over the last 60 years, historians and armchair researchers have offered no shortage of possible explanations for what could have killed nine hikers in the Ural Mountains back in 1959. Although ideas such as an avalanche or a weapons test gone awry are usually treated as plausible, the proverbial snowman hypothesis has been largely dismissed as merely an example of just how outlandish the speculation can sometimes get. However, a fascinating new investigation by a Russian media outlet explores the often derided idea that a Siberian Sasquatch could have somehow led to the hiking party's mysterious demise. The surprisingly lengthy piece was inspired by the musings of what the outlet calls an eminent doctor who postulated that the ribs injured the rib injuries sustained by two of the dead hikers were the result of large creatures squeezing their chest in a manner similar to an adult inadvertently hurting a child by embracing them with too much force alas in an entirely understandable stance the allegedly renowned doctor opted not to reveal his name for fear of being ridiculed Nonetheless, the bold assertion that Bigfoot might be to blame for the 
diet love incident apparently led reporters to look into such a scenario, and in turn, they uncovered several fascinating witnesses, witness accounts of a Sasquatch-like creature known as Camp Campolan, Camp, uh, Campolan uh, lurking in the region. One such account came from a local historian who recalled camping in the Ural Mountains discover, and discovering massive barefoot prints outside of his tent in the morning, as well as a tall tree nearby that inexplicably twisted into a spiral. Others recalled actually spotting the creature and described them as one might expect, tall, bipedal, and hairy. Intriguingly, in, intriguingly, quite a few residents from the region who were willing to share their knowledge of the Kampolan ascribed a number of almost supernatural abilities to the creatures. Bearing an uncanny resemblance to North American tales of Bigfoot, one individual noted that mysterious, the mysterious cryptid is close the person experiences a hypnotic suggestion which causes fear or even panic. Another witness described seeing the beast vanish before their eyes as if they had evaporated into the air. Uh, chillingly, several people blamed the creature for mysterious disappearances in the area, and one even went so far as to share a classic changeling story in which a human baby was seemingly switched with that of a Kampolan. Although it still seems highly unlikely that the diet Dietlov Pass incident could have been caused by a Yeti encounter. The Kampolan accounts of the people in the region are rather fascinating since a good number of the tales are almost certainly being shared with the world for the first time ever. And so we probably owe some gratitude to the mysterious doctor who dared to go there and in turn helped to unearth a slew of sensational and heretofore unheard stories of the mysterious Sasquatch-like creature said to lurk in the mountains of Siberia. So what are your thoughts on that, Eric? Well, I mean, the Yeti is another one of those things that we've covered way too many times over the years. <laughs> not, not enough for some of our listeners who absolutely love the Yeti, but more than enough for myself. And, you know, I, I I think it's interesting. I mean, you, you brought up a couple things th that is actually we're talking about in chat right now. Uh, the Delta Pass, for example, uh, Josh Gates actually did just do a, a recent two part episode f about that particular case in which nine students, uh, well, actually, in which 10 students had gone out on this journey as part of the school thing. They had to go and into the wilderness on a hike and do something. I don't know exactly what. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Uh, but at the very beginning, one of those students turned back. So it ended up being nine who were left out there. They went out. They were gone for 10 days, uh, and they never came back. And I can't remember the exact dates, but the government eventually issued a search for, the, for, for these kids, these students. Uh, and I think it was like around the 15th or 16th, I think, is what the documentation said, uh, that – the investigation or the search had begun. And when they went out to look for them, they ended up finding the bodies over the course of several months, uh, completely frozen. Some of the bodies were missing their eyes, missing their tongue. Uh, one of the bodies had 12 ribs broken and crushed. Uh, but was, what was interesting about it was that the, all their clothing was nicely stacked inside of their tent the heater wasn't opened uh, and used uh, food was packed away nothing was stolen uh, and it looked like that maybe the tent was cut from the inside and then these kids ran out and there was a lot of conspiracy as to what really happened and one of the cases in which was brought up was of course the yeti um th there was a lot of concern that maybe this bigfoot had either spooked them or had gone after them and killed them and there just wasn't enough evidence to prove that something like that would happen. I mean, as we know, there's not enough evidence to prove that Bigfoot even exists uh, in general. So right. something like this, you know, like that, like the story you're telling us is, again, who knows? I mean, you're out there, you see a lot of weird things. I mean, <laughs> there, there are animals that hide so well, you know, especially in like colder climates. You think of uh, or the, the snow leopard, for example, who is so very difficult to find. Uh and, you know, they're, they're, they're around. We have pictures of them. But if you're looking with just the naked eye, you see slight movement. 
And that's right. it because they blend in with the surroundings. Now, what's interesting since this topic is in chat and I just want to bring it up. I was going to write, but it's easier to just say it <laughs> instead of type it. Um, you know, Josh Gates, he ended up exploring all the different myths or the conspiracy surrounding these students. Uh, one being, of course, the 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 Yeti. Uh, the second being a UFO or aliens mm-hmm. or something. Again, there was not enough evidence for that. Nothing really suggested like what do you even look for in that manner, you know, uh, right. other than maybe something within the students? You know, I don't know. We, we talk about getting chipped and things like that, that aliens might do if they're real and abduct people. Um, another one was a nuclear blast. I, apparently there was some radiation found within the area and in particular on some of the students. Uh, and, and I think for a while, uh, the idea of a nuclear missile or a nuclear warhead being tested could have been the result of the death of these students. Um, but as Josh eventually found out, two of the students actually worked within a nuclear plant. And so it's very possible that those, and since it was those two students that had the, the uh, radiation on their clothing, it's most likely that they brought the radiation with them and nothing was really you know, detonated. They checked the trees around. It took some core samples and found that there was some radiation within the core samples, but not nearly enough to determine a nuclear or a, uh, you know, a blast, uh, a missile of any sort. Um, hmm. And there were a couple of other things. You know, the avalanche was one of them because they found snow on top of the, the thing. Another one was like this weird, I forget what they call it, but like a weird sound that drives people crazy. It's like a sound you don't hear. Uh, or can't hear, but it drives like people mad. Sound? Another weird thing. Yeah, infrasound. Um, they, they thought maybe there's some kind of infrasound wrapping around the mountain and drove the kids crazy, and they ended up killing themselves or something like that, or spooked them enough to run away, and then couldn't find their way back. Uh, but they didn't really explain why their bones are crushed or anything like that. Like, like the eyes and the tongue missing, that could have been animals. That's mm-hmm. somewhat explainable, right. but. I, I think that what really came down to it was some interesting evidence that Josh collected at the end of his uh, uh, of the doc documentary uh, of his episode um, regarding the government. And I think the government at the time is probably the most likely source of as to why these kids were killed. And and I say killed, not just you know passed away due to some uh, weird unforeseen circumstances. But uh, I think they were caught by the government at the time and they were probably killed because they either saw something they weren't supposed to see or I mean, who knows what, you know, it was a really dangerous time over there in Russia. And what's interesting is around the 15th or 16th, I think is when the investigation started to go find these kids. And that's what the government continually said for years. That's, that was the basis. That's what the documentation told us. But at the end of the episode, there were new documentation that was found. It was released, wasn't previously released until the shooting or the filming of this episode. And they found the documentation signed by government officials that said that the investigation for the, children or the students disappearance actually began on the 6th which was roughly two weeks before what they had actually claimed was their supposed time of looking for them which means that there are two weeks amiss as to like why didn't they document this everywhere why didn't they say the sick you know they're, they're hiding something and i think that kind of resulted in this idea that the government must have been involved in, in some way or some form and what's really cool about it is that because of the investigation that Josh did, the Russian government now reopened the case and are now opening new files that have never been previously seen to try to determine what exactly happened to these kids. And hopefully they find it very soon because I'm sure everyone is just wants some peace. He wants to know what exactly happened out there. Right. Uh, and I think it's really cool. Like, you know, I mean, I'm always been a fan of Josh Gates and his work that mm-hmm. he does. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited for something like this to hear and see something unfold and know that there could be real answers coming our way sometime soon. Uh, so I don't mean to change. I know you're talking about the Yeti, but I mean, <laughs> you know, well, I mean, there are so many, uh, so many theories on it, apparently that, I mean, that just adds one more to it is the Yeti. So I, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't remember ever hearing about this incident. Um, 
I don't even remember doing research on it for, for any shows or anything. So it's interesting to see that, uh, this actually goes back quite a while to, to 1959. I think it was, they mm-hmm. said, um, so it's, it's one of those ones that, yeah, I hope that they do get some type of, uh, finality to it because you would think that the, the families involved are somehow s- still suffering because they've never heard um, what actually happened to their their loved ones. Um, but, um, and I mean, it's hard to 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 put a a my own personal spin on what might have happened because. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I'm I'm not buying the Yeti thing. Yes, I get that they found um, stress on some ribs that could possibly say that something squeezed these people. But I mean, if it was an avalanche, which I mean, there's there's multiple theories. But if it was an avalanche, that would obviously would have done the same effect. I would think, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as a nuclear blast, again could have been possible to cause damage like that to the ribs but um when you think about what they're they're comparing it to with if uh if a an adult squeezes a a child too hard in, in excitement of seeing them or whatever and causes damage to the ribs um to me that f- sounds more like pressure over a nuclear blast but um i honestly couldn't say one way or the other for that one um but yeah, interesting. I mean, just really interesting that this this is still going on for as long as it has. Yeah. So. Um, all right, folks. Um, you know what? I think we're going to take another break. And when we come back, um, we're just going to go over some brief stuff. And if you have Skype, I will open up the lines for you guys to give us a quick call. Um, I know that a couple of people wanted to give us a welcome back. So uh, we will be right back right after this. Hey, everyone. I'm Kat Ward, host of Paranormal Heart, your monthly paranormal podcast. Join me the last Sunday of every month as I speak to people who share their paranormal experiences. You can follow me on Podbean, YouTube, TuneIn, iTunes, Spotify, and Paranormal Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. I am Justin. And I'm Eric. And if you're just catching us, um, I uh, had mentioned just before the break that uh, we are going to open up the phone lines here um, in a little bit. If you have Skype, we don't have an actual phone number for you guys to call, but if you're on Skype, you can give us a call, uh, but just give us a few minutes here. We're going to go over the, the last couple news articles that we just read. Um, so we talked about at the beginning of the show before the, the news, the headlines, um, we talked about the sound that Eric heard just a couple days ago, uh, when he was helping my brother out. Uh, we talked about, um, uh, is it the Hill on Haunted House, the article that you had mm-hmm. said? Um, we talked about a Yeti being responsible for, and I'm not going to even try and butcher this name, The whatever the D-pass, <laughs> 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 uh, um, whatever happened at, at Diet Love Pass. Um, what was the other, I can't even remember what the other article of yours uh, was now. The other one was the the uh, live paranormal investigation happening this oh, Friday yeah, for, for Salem, right? Right, right. Salem. Um, and then we talked about Owlman. So interesting stuff. Um, I I honestly like the Owlman. Like I said, we've talked about this, and, and to me, the more I look at this type of stuff with the Owlman and the Mothman, and even like I said listening to uh, a couple different other podcasts and them talking about how 
a lot of people that are accounting seeing large owls actually go under hypnosis or or whatever and come to the realization that there was some type of extraterrestrial um, abduction type scenario going on, uh, anything like that. So um, as far as the the Yeti causing the diet law of pass issue, I think everybody knows where Eric and I stand on the Yeti and, and Bigfoot. Um, but it, again, anything is possible. So in my opinion, I think that uh, it, it could be a possibility, but who knows? Uh, but um, any final thoughts from you? On, it? Mm-hmm. on any of them, I guess. <laughs> No, not really. I, I mean, the the only one, just just that darn sound, man. It's just, <laughs> just want to know where it where it came from. That's all. That's it. Yeah. Um, and it'd be interesting f- to see if anybody does try to follow the sound, like you're saying you were wanting to do, but you were doing something. Um, because I don't think in any of the videos I've seen anybody is trying to find it. They're just they're sitting in their yard or whatever, and all of a sudden they're just recording the sound. So mm. it'd be interesting if somebody does try and do some research on it. Uh, but yeah, so I uh, wanted to sh- throw a quick shout out to Brian Anderson. Uh, he actually got us set up with a very good sounding uh, software to, to do live shows with, as well as record the shows as well but uh he was actually helping me with setting this up so that i could do this live with very minimal equipment so thank you brian for that i appreciate it um so with that i'm going to if if you guys have skype i'm going to open up the lines and you're more than welcome to call us uh in the meantime um i'm trying to think if there's any other things that we have to to <clears throat> announce I don't think so make sure we put that all at the beginning so we wouldn't forget <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um if, if you didn't catch the beginning uh we are under the a new media company that Eric and I created to put uh beyond reason paratruth radio uh crime crack and I even threw in um, the the S files. So if you guys are interested in any of those shows, uh, just go to Spreaker, look up new lantern media and you'll find all those shows under new lantern media. Now Um, I do plan on releasing a new crime crack at some point. Um, I'm going to talk to Eric about it. I did talk to Heidi very briefly about it, if she would want to do one. So uh, at some point, we will get in there and and do another episode of Crime Crack. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Lynn, uh, book updates. I am close to uh, getting the second draft of, of the second book done. I... I'm around chapter eight ish on my up uh, uh second draft, so I am working at it. Hopefully by the end of the year, um I will have it completely cleaned up and ready for release, which would be great for anybody who wants it for Christmas. But um also um for anybody out there who who listens to Paratruth Radio, uh I'm actually going to be releasing anthology for the uh, writers group that I have here in North Dakota, um, kind of a spooky story. Uh, I keep saying to everybody kind of a twilight zone or, or, uh, uh, tales from the crypt type feel to these stories. So definitely look out for that as well. Um, and uh, sorry, I, looking at the chat for a second. So um, make sure you're checking all that out. Uh, I guess 
if we're not going to have any callers, um, I guess we will wrap things up. So definitely check out New Lantern Media, all the shows that are going to be coming out there. I definitely encourage everybody to uh, check out paratruthradio.com, beyondreason.net. Those those websites are still out there. Uh, and uh, wanted to give a shout out to Brian Anderson, who actually did the graphic for New Lantern Media as well. Um, oh, and of course, as soon as I'm doing this, Jerry wants to call in. So hold on one second. Go ahead, Jerry. Sorry about that. Hello, greetings and salutations, Justin and Eric. <laughs> Hola. How's it going? Hola. Good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Can you we hear can't, me? We, we couldn't see yep. each other for a moment there, so there's a bit of silence. So we didn't know if he was going to say <laughs> what first. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You can't see me, but that, that, I can see you guys. That, that's what it was. like. <laughs> When you're talking, your screen comes on, but I don't see right. you. But you I just can't see my see picture. Justin. Exactly, I just see your picture. So Justin and I, when we're talking, we're usually using the camera to like look at each other and give us the cue to be like, you say something, I say something. And when we can't see each other, you just get a lot of blank noise. Uh, so. <laughs> it's, it's- I'm in incognito because I, I'm a cosmeticless, uh, so I look like a Yeti right now, and that's why you can only see my photo, and, so you can hear me and not see me. <laughs> I'm spying on you guys. <laughs> uh, very interesting topics, by the way, especially with the weird uh, paranormal sound. I've heard some... I- I've heard and read of strange stories of people in China, believe it or not, uh, not only hearing something like trumpet blast, but seeing almost like an uh, like a celestial city in the sky, just like the song "The Spirit in the Sky," going to see the city in the sky or the spirit in the sky. So, what do you think of that? Seeing and hearing a, a, a trumpet blast and and a like a celestial city. Do you think that that's you know government induced, or do you think that's a real a real, a real I don't. I don't. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessarily government induced. I mean, I think thinking it, it, there's two ways to look at. Well, there's three ways. I'm sorry, but there's two very extreme ways to look at it. One is saying like that it's government induced. That that's getting into a lot of conspiracy theories, theory stuff as to like the government's, uh, you know, creating a <laughs> number of different things that's going to give us a, a poor outcome on our on Earth, like. Uh, you know, like what we're doing with airplanes and whatnot. And it's just, I think some of that gets a little too crazy. Uh, right. But on the other end of the spectrum, I think just saying that uh, something like the horn and <sighs> seeing this this almost city in the sky type thing is a, a godly thing and that the end times are coming, I think that's another extreme. Uh, not that either one should be disregarded completely, uh, mm-hmm. but I but I, but I think we need to have a, a good balance and sure. just really do some scientific research to try to figure out what exactly is happening uh, instead of jumping right. to conclusions. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess time will tell, really. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I definitely think that there needs to be a balance for sure between it could be something that's godly, a, a, a visual and and audio signal of the end times, you know, truly from God, or it may be something where you know they were imagining it uh or or maybe it's something that uh could be uh i guess some some people that are in conspiracy where i don't i don't really really know too much about this but project blue beam or whatever to transmit a, an image in the sky and all this stuff but then if if that somehow glorifies god then how how would it why would it be project the infamous project blue beam you know so i don't i don't believe right necessarily that it was that but maybe it was something godly well i think wasn't pl- I, I pardon i don't remember necessarily but justin you and i did an episode on project blue beam several years ago now i think i was still in mm-hmm. virginia at the time uh and project blue beam was one of those things i think when we were talking about we we're talking about how the government was trying to create like a god uh identity to try to get mm. people of the masses to kind of control people of the masses you know mm-hmm. um basically creating 
God in man's image, you know, as opposed to mm. God creating man in his image. Uh, and, you know, obviously that's one of those things, again, where there's a lot of technical things about it. There's a lot of different details and opinions about it. And it kind of all gets scrappy when you bring them all mm. together and you realize, okay, well, this doesn't match here. That doesn't make sense there. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it's scrappy. one of those things again. Like scrappy yeah. dude. Yeah, like Scrappy Doo. I mean, <laughs> Scrappy Doo is kind of a jerk, but I mean, yeah, it's it gets weird. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That, yeah, absolutely. Justin, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I mean, <sighs> Project Blue Beam was a multi-phase project um, that they were saying that. First things first, they were going to create sounds. Um, then they were going to be projecting images in the sky. And depending on what deity you worshipped is what you were going to see type deal. Almost like they were uh, reading people's minds to do it. Um, now, could it be that that is what was happening in China when they were hearing the trumpet sound? I don't know. I... I mean, I, I do believe that there are uh, things that the government isn't telling us about. Is Are there projects like this that are are happening or were happening back, uh, or planning, I should say, to, to be happening? Um, I don't know. Uh, and I've seen these, these images that they released on social media and YouTube and stuff of the, the floating city. Um, and just like a lot of the other stuff we talk about where they capture these different images, uh, there is so much technology out there now for us to falsify this, this information that it, to me, there's, there's no way to, to derive the difference. Mm. So, right. Right, right. Um, did you happen? Did anyone see the new uh, Yeti cartoon movie uh, called Abominable? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I saw it, and uh, it was interesting. Um, you know, and I realized that they're they're needing the you know Hollywood needs material to create you know children and adult cartoons and what have you. You know, to especially I know mythologies are very popular. Um, I know one of our favorite uh, rides at Disney World is Expedition Everest, and the theme of it is the uh, the Yeti. Um, and it's funny because in the in the Epcot uh, store, uh, there's a, a cute little fuzzy round Yeti, you know, that they sell for you know ten, twenty, thirty bucks. But then in the in the actual ride, you're going upside down, right side up, and and you do happen. It's sort of a psychological thing where you you see the Yeti tearing apart the edge of the rail. And so you're thinking that you're going to go off the rail quite literally. And uh, so it's a really fun ride. <laughs> and you see this, this mechanical, you know, slash real looking Yeti, like growling and, you know, his claws and fangs bearing at you and roaring at you and stuff. It's, it's an exhilarating ride. Anyway, but I realized that that, that is based upon a mythology uh, that obviously the cartoon is based upon too. And, and it's uh, rooted in, uh, you know, in Nepalese, Indian, Chinese sort of uh, folklore as well, where they've, you know, uh, pe people, it, you know, it's several uh, hundred years or, you know, whatever, hundreds of years ago, as well as, you know, in modernity, have seen, you know, the Yeti. And uh, anyway, I just, I thought it was interesting about uh, the Yeti about how it's resurged in, in you know, a popular cartoon. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I have talked about Hollywood a lot, and they're always going to try to find stuff that they're going to be able to make money off of. And yeah. obviously, the Yeti has been a hot topic over the last couple of years and seems to be getting hotter for some reason. And Hollywood's going to capitalize on it. And as they did, they actually have two movies. Uh, one particularly with the Bigfoot is brown fur and then the other one with the Yeti which has white fur so they actually right. have two movies out right now both cartoons um, and of course they could create something for adults but they're not going to do that they're going to create it for the children because the children are going to go to their parents and the parents are going to give in to their children and they're going to make more money off of it <laughs> Right? <laughs> you know us adults know better we're like oh we're not going to go bother you know seeing an actual like 
what do you call it, like live action movie about Bigfoot, we would wait for that to come out on DVD or something because most likely it's going to be a flop in theaters. <laughs> but if you make it into a cartoon, it's all cutesy and stuff. I guarantee Hollywood's going to make way more money off of something like that than they would uh, any other way. So, I mean, right. good for them. Good for them for doing something and <laughs> making money. Well, you know, they don't need any more money, but good for them. Uh, <laughs> it's just, I would like to see some new stuff, Justin. I don't know, man. Right. There's, there, there's like so many things, so many movies and television shows that are being recreated mm-hmm. because nobody has, or is at least no one's allowing original ideas to pass uh studios for some reason i don't know why and i think it's because nobody wants to take a chance on new material because uh, you always have that balance like if i could put you know if i put 62 million dollars down on this project that is brand new there's no guarantee i mean that that's a big a, a big thing you're taking on you know a big risk mm-hmm. but if you take something like spider-man and you say okay We've already done this movie four times and made a killing on all of them. Let's redo it again. People are going to spend the same amount of money, and they're guaranteed to make money off of it. So that's why they keep doing this over and over and over again. Uh, hopefully, they don't do that with Bigfoot. But it, you know, it's nice to see that there's something new out there. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you guys took a, a caller. It was funny, right when you said, "Well, it doesn't look like we have any callers," I like scrambled to, to you know, put the the microphone headphone into my <laughs> cell phone. And I'm like, "I'm gonna call. I'm gonna get them. I'm, hopefully, I'm gonna get them." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, glad to be able to, to chat with you guys again. You too. Yep, you too. Well, I guess I'll let you guys go since uh, you're probably going over time. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Talk See you. Bye bye. Ciao, guys. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. All right. So that was Jerry. Um, she used to do a show. I'm sure she's probably planning on bringing it back at some point called uh, Tiger Girl for God Radio. Uh, so definitely make sure that you check into that uh, when she does come back. Cat, uh, if you would like to call, go ahead and give us a call. We will get you into the show. Um, kind of interesting that yeah hollywood is capitalizing on the bigfoot yeti phenomenon i mean they kind of always have i guess but oh yeah to give it give the the yeti its own cartoon is actually kind of funny um and the (laughs) the yeti that i always remember is the one from rudolph the red-nosed reindeer Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. Cat, welcome to Pair Truth Radio. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks. Thanks. I'm so excited to hear that you guys are back. My one of my favorite shows. Oh, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. that. <laughs> well, sure, you know. I look forward to listening to your shows all the time, and then life had to get in the way, and you had to go on hiatus, and I was like, blasted! And so it's really <laughs> nice to hear you guys back. <laughs> well, and I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can attest to this. I, there are so many shows out there right now that, um, I, I mean, the industry is saturated with not just paranormal podcasts, but podcasts in general. And it's sometimes it's hard to find one that you're truly getting into or has the sound quality enough to, to be like, Oh, you know, this sounds good. So it's, it's gotta be at least good content. So. Yeah. And that doesn't always happen. (laughs) Right. I've listened to some shows before that had really good audio and I, I don't even remember the names of the shows and because I never went back because I didn't, I didn't like the content. (laughs) <laughs> so they weren't very memorable. Right. So you guys always right. have quality. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to hear you guys back. Cool. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I was so happy. Well, first of all, I missed the first half, first half of the show because I wasn't getting audio. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was Spreaker on my desktop. The audio is not working for Spreaker for some reason. I tried everything else. Uh, YouTube, a whole bunch of other things. Audio, not a problem. I tried uh, other podcast on Spreaker and it didn't work. So it's like, oh, well, I guess my computer doesn't like Spreaker. But <laughs> yeah. that's weird. It happens. 
Yeah, I think Brian Anderson had asked, well, do you have your sound bar on? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I was happy to hear, too, that you talked about book two, Justin. Um, yep. I was surprised to hear that you're writing a book, too. Because <laughs> 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 you said before that it was coming out, and yeah. Again, real life happens, so yeah, I'm really happy that that's coming out too. You just, you guys just made me happy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad well, you know, to do so. I'm glad he's got it done. I, there, there are times where I'd reach out him and I when it comes to his book. We're always talking back and forth, just keep it keeping each other on on track with things. And there were a few times yeah. where I'd text him like middle of the day, be like, "So, you know, did you do anything else on your book?" And he'd be like. <sighs> no, not yet. And I'm like, okay, well, I want a chapter in like three days. You know, keep him <laughs> on it. And finally, you know, he started sending me all his chapters. Like, I've already read through the entire book. And it's just like, I'm really excited about this book. Uh, it, I, I think the, the second chapter, it just takes the story in a whole different, to a whole different place and really sets up for, for a great series ending later when he does get into a third book and you know i am really excited for it i'm proud of you justin good job man um, i appreciate it and there there is one thing that we were talking about and that's actually going back through the first book uh we're going to actually do some revising and re-editing and, and i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna spill the beans i don't know if justin it did or not but i'm gonna do it anyway for him but they're both gonna be be, be released with new covers uh so mm-hmm. Pretty cool special edition covers. So, uh, and they look really good. So I'm really excited for that for him. Yeah, he told me about the new cover. I I, uh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The so, uh, Brian Bowden was actually nice enough to do those for me as well, and he did an awesome job, like beyond what I was expecting. So, Uncle Bowden is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both brands um, are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I think half the podcasters out there wouldn't be around if it wasn't for Brian Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> All the ones that we know, anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's so many of them. Good grief. Um, yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, it's. When do you think the book will be out? It's so funny because I would see you post on Facebook uh, pictures. You know, it's another episode of Where's Justin Now? And I think I posted one day, well, I know where you're not. That's writing on uh, working book two. <laughs> um, I, I'm hoping sooner than than I'm, I'm saying, but I'm going to put out there probably around the, the end of November, the beginning of December. Uh, it just depends on how long it really takes me to get through uh second draft and then you know i'm gonna throw it out to my beta readers you're one of those as well as a couple of other people um and then um you know once that's done depending on how long it takes everybody to get through the book which it's a shorter book so it shouldn't take very long um then you know i'll go through and see where i need to revise again um from the the beta readers suggestions and if I feel it's in a good spot, you know, I do rely on, on Eric's, uh, uh, suggestions. And and if he thinks it's in a good spot, um, I will make sure that I, you know, tell Brian that, you know, here's the word count or, or the page count or whatever it is that he needs for the cover. And we'll get that one set up and ready to go. And it shouldn't take much to get the first book revised because it it is already out. It's already done. Um, it's just a couple of things that I probably need to add on or or uh, uh, re reword or something like that. So that's where the second edition of the book is going to come in on top of the the new cover. Nice. When, and where I have the first uh, the book, book one, does this mean I'm going to have to buy the first book again to have matching covers? <laughs> Since you bought <laughs> two copies of book one, I will send you a an autographed copy of the second edition. But if you want two copies, you're going to have to buy another copy for for yourself. Yes. Okay. That's not a problem. Yeah. I bought two <laughs> copies because one's autographed and I put that away. Um so it doesn't get damaged and the other one was, was for reading so there you go that's that's a smart thing like 
Because Justin, I've worked so closely with Justin on these things, like just proofreading and stuff. So when the book comes out, I buy myself a copy and burn it to be like, finally, the book is done. And that's my way of being like, this is it. I can burn this thing because that that's part of my life that's no more for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm doing proofreading in school right now. So, hey, when I when I do the beta testing, I'll be able to apply that. Nice. There you go. Cool. And now all we need to do is get all of the hats back on. <laughs> uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> because we never had, we never did come back to do the show. So, interesting thing. All the hats, at least the original version of it, is not coming back at all. And oh. It's unfortunate. I know it's unfortunate. I really enjoyed that show. Uh, but because my co host and I were always, well, I was mostly traveling uh, and it was hard to do the show when I'm traveling for work. Um, but now that I moved back to Ohio, I'm no longer in Georgia. He's kind of got this weird thing about audio because he's an audio guy. That's what he does. He, he's a sound mixer in, in, uh, in the film industry. Uh, he will not, for whatever reason, do the radio show if we have to do it online in separate states. The quality, he says, is not good enough for him, and therefore he's going to not do the show at all. So because of that, there is no All the Hats, and uh, it's really sad. But maybe – I know he's not going to do it anymore, so maybe I'll just have to find somebody else to to join me, and we'll keep doing it some other time. But – yeah, because I really enjoyed it because, like I told you before, I don't know anything about behind the scenes of TV shows and movies and all that. So yeah. it was really interesting for me to hear all that. So I thought, wow. And sometimes I would message you, you know, what what do, what, what does this, I think it was PA or no, mm-hmm. wait, what was it? I can't. Yeah. I, I'm like, what does probably, this mean? P-A-A-D. You sent me a couple of different things asking what they were. Yeah. Um, and, and that's one of the, that's something that actually you had sent me enough of the like enough messages about that that I was like, you know what? I've got to make sure that when I'm talking on air, I'm talking like I've got to make sure I think to myself, I'm talking to people who don't know what I'm talking about. So instead of yeah. using all the abbreviations, which is normal, it's like, oh, I, let me let me rephrase this and say it the, the way everyone would understand it. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is that? <laughs> but, you know, it was really interesting to see that aspect of, um, like I said, filmmaking and TV making. It was just very, very interesting. I really enjoyed it. And you have well, to thanks. It- Yeah, I, I mean, I went, I'll do what I can. I'm going to try to bring it back. If anything, I'll at least do some episodes by myself. Um, just just for you. Just, just <laughs> I'm going to bring it back for everybody, just just to make you happy. So uh, oh. I'll work on that. You know, my own you know who would be really yes. good and I think uh, – <laughs> Would you'd have a good dynamic with? And I don't know. I I know he's really busy, but Christian would be a great, yeah, co-host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'll change the title from all the hats to all the hats 4K. Here <laughs> <laughs> <Good> to go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna let you guys go in case somebody else wants to call in. I just want to say welcome back, and um, you've you've made a bunch of people happy. Well, I'm glad. So good luck, and we'll chat soon. All right, Sounds thank good. You. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, folks. That was Cat from Paranormal Heart. Um, definitely check out um, her show as well. Uh, you know, um, I th- I think that, or I hope, a lot of people are enjoying the new show. Um, I'm really looking forward to Paratruth Radio being back and Beyond Reason being back. And I had thought about talking to you about bringing back all the hats, but I do know that your original co-host wasn't going to be doing it anymore, so I didn't know what the plan was for that at all. So, mm. Yeah, never know the plans. <laughs> just just wing everything. Everything is just wung. It's Wong. <laughs> it's Wong. <laughs> Word of the day, folks. Wong. <laughs> um. All right. Well. Um. If anybody else wants to call, you've got a couple of minutes before um. We we disconnect here, so um. 
just wanted to say thank you to everybody who was giving us congrats and, and good jobs. I appreciate that uh, we have a pretty good fan base where people had missed us. So, um, like we said at the very beginning, we've been talking about it a little bit throughout the entire show. Uh, there is a new format to the show. Um, we're going to be covering more paranormal news type headlines. So if you uh, see something strange on the TV or hear about it through uh, other people, definitely reach out to us and let us know um, about any articles or anything that you see, because I would love to do some research and get them on the show. Um, on top of that, we are under a new... Uh, media company new lantern media if you guys go to spreaker and type in new lantern media you will find all the shows underneath that media company um and like i said before make sure you check out paratruthradio.com and beyondreason.net um anything further that you wanted to add uh no uh just oh um again next episode will be next weekend that'll be the 13th I believe. Yep. Uh, yeah. So the thirteenth will be our next episode, and then the one after that will be our Halloween special on the twenty seventh. So there'll be a little one week break between those, um, and that'll be basically our, our new schedule every other week from there on out. So uh, just something to remember, and I'm sure we'll remind you again next week. So. Yep. All right, folks. Until next week, where you will find us same time, same channel. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. Peace.